mum who caused her son's murder. I was umming and ahhing about what to call this video, what to title this video, innit? but I think I'm just going to run with that title. Um, it's quite catchy, innit? I mean, clickable. The mum who caused her son's murder. I'm never going to want to watch this video and find out what it's about. So I'll probably run with that. The mum who caused her son's murder. Sometimes, like, if you're not street smart, you could think that you're doing something to help a situation, but you could be literally making it 10 times worse. I was watching, you know them documentaries that are on YouTube and that knife crime in London and that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and I'm going to do my best to try and find the video and then uh, put the link in the description box and even timestamp it what part of the video to go to to listen to the story. Because with these videos where they're talking about London knife crime and that they'll talk about all different types of people's stories and that so and I'm definitely not going to include it in this video because I don't want it to get a copyright strike and that but um yeah when I when I was watching this video there was one part of the video and I was like it actually got me mad it got man vexed you know because I just thought to myself do you know what yeah if this boy had his dad in his life and you know what Maybe his dad, but at the end of the day, if his dad's not in the picture, and I don't know why, innit? so I ain't even going to say, oh, well, a man should be in his son's life, innit? but yeah, this part of the video just got me mad, didn't it? So, they're in East London, they're talking about, um, obviously, the knife crime and that across London, and there was one story during this video that came up, and there was this local 14-year-old black cute, obviously black cute, innit? There's no uh, knife crime. Most of the knife crime victims are not white in this country, innit? Although, 90% of the population, them 80 upwards is white people, innit? Anyway, look a 14 year old black you in East London. Go and watch it for yourself, innit? But something along the lines of, I think he was walking down the street, some older youths, they must have stopped him, spoke to him, bought him some chicken and chips. And yeah, they basically said to him when they saw him the next time or the time after that, we've looked after you, so now you owe us. Yeah, you need to work for us, innit? So they basically groomed him into selling drugs. So what they did was they was making him sell crack and heroin and that white and brown, you get me? And they made him hold on to between six and eight hundred pounds worth of food. Six and eight hundred pounds worth of crack and heroin. And his mum thinking that she's being a saint, thinking that she's actually doing him. I mean, obviously, in her heart, you know, she feels like she's doing the right thing. But she, what she has to understand is what are the other people on the other side going to think and react and how are they going to deal with this situation? So the mum has discovered that the son is selling drugs. Uh, she found the stash between six and eight hundred pounds worth of crack and heroin. Do you know what she did? She disposed of it. Now, most of you are watching this right now, a normal logical person would think, yeah, well, if a mum found her son selling drugs and it's worth six to eight hundred pounds, of course she would dispose of it. What else is she going to do? Is she going to smoke it with her son? No, she's going to smoke her son? No, she's going to dispose of it. Yeah, that's what normal logical civilians would think. But when you're thinking about man them on the road, they're not logical civilians. So them man there are going to take that as a disrespect. Them man there are going to take that as, fam, you... You, 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 you've got rid of my, 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 my money. Yeah, you've basically thrown away my money. You owe us money. So, obviously, the mum is disposed of the six to eight hundred pound worth of food and that. And obviously, the youths, them are going to want their money back. Or at least their food. All right, you, you can't give us the food, but we want their money back. So, you know what they did? They made the youth go up to country. Yeah, so he's trapping OT, county lies, whatever you want to call it nowadays, and that man used to call it OT back in the day to work off the debt. Next thing you know, I think a couple months later, innit, a car pulled up and blamed him, shot him in the head. All because it was something to do with his mum disposing of the food. When I saw that, it made me mad, you know, it made me vexed. As I was watching it, I was like, oh my God, because the mum said, yeah, I found the drugs and that, and I disposed of it. And right then and there, I didn't even need to see what was going on in the next two, three minutes of the, the documentary, innit? Right then and there, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, does this fucking bitch know what trouble she has caused? Literally, 
Now, did she think that she could just take the drugs and dispose of it and the youths then will be like, oh, it's all right. It's only six to 800 pounds worth of drugs. It's cool. I understand how you feel as a mother. I would do the same if I was a father in it, yeah, and going about their business. No. What, the, what she should have done, what a man would have done, a man, a father who is, has somewhat uh, street smartness about him, do you know what he would have done? He would have found the youths and given it back to them. Now, whether he wants to take it to a physical thing and smack them up, then that's up to him, innit? But most fathers who are logical, six to eight hundred pounds worth of drugs, they would have found the boys and given it back to them and, and then run them blood club, tell them, don't contact my son ever again. Because there's no way yeah, you're going to uh, approach uh, some youths that you've taken, you've got hold of their six to eight hundred pounds worth of food and try to give it back to them, they're going to say no. Like to say, if you put it on the floor in front of them, they're not going to... Um, pick it up some of these some people like they're just not street smart and I don't mean you have to grow up on the street in it, but what did you think what, what did she really think uh, how, how did she think these youths were going to react do you think oh yeah it's cool man it's only 6800 to pounds ah, that's blessed yeah the car cracking her and go on trees yeah that's something we can just find out in our back garden and that money is a serious thing you know Man will die over money. Everyone treats money seriously. Even the government. You don't pay your taxes, but you're going to go to jail, fam. Wesley, Wesley Snipes, they sent him to jail, apparently. He didn't pay his taxes and that. I think maybe they made an example of him as well. Like, oh, just because you're a celebrity and that, that don't mean that you can avoid paying taxes and that. Look at Harry Redknapp. They wanted to do him up for something, I think... Um, Tax avoidance is legal, but tax evasion is illegal and that. Something along the lines they want to send him to jail and that for tax evasion. Not paying up money. Money is a serious thing. Man will go jail for not paying money. Man will get killed for not paying up money. God forbid my son was ever groomed into a, a, a drug dealing gang and that. You think I'm going to take the drugs and go and dispose of it, knowing that there's going to be youths lurking and wanting their six to eight hundred pounds back. She really did not sit down and think of the consequences and the repercussions of her actions of disposing of the drugs. It don't make no flipping sense, man. And her you got slapped over because of it. So, um, yeah. But, like one of my work colleagues says, big up man like the, the easiest way to influence a black man they just say, here, here's 200 pounds, hold that. You know, if I wanted to, uh, if I was a drug dealer, if I wanted to groom some young black boys in that, yeah, to start shotting for me, all white boys, but let's just use black boys in it, come on, a black man, this, 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 this video is more so for the, the black community in that. You know what I would do? If I wanted to groom some young black cutes in that, what I'd do is, especially if I'm driving a nice car in that, let's say I'm driving a Mercedes, what I'll do is I'll pick up a youth off the street and that. Let's obviously he's comfortable enough to roll around me. Let's just say he's one of the youngers on the on the estate. If I'm trapping, I'll pick him up in my Mercedes. I'll drive around with him for three, four hours or six, seven hours of the day. Shot him. I'll make him watch what I'm doing in it. Yeah, go link this cat. Go link this fiend. Go link that brother there. Go link that yellow over there. Boom, 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 boom. I'll show him. Look, man's made a grand in one day. You know, just driving around. Six to seven, eight hours driving around. I made a grand. Yeah, all that. That's a hundred pound there, innit? And before he get, and then I'll, I'll drop him off at his yard, innit? And as he's about to get out of the car and I'll grab him, hey, anytime you want this sort of money, you know, hit me up. Like anytime you want to live this sort of lifestyle, you know, hit me up. Yeah? Forget all school and them things there. Did your parents go school and university? Yeah, yeah, they went school and university, innit, yeah? What car are they driving? Boy, they're driving a full focus, innit? Are they struggling for bills? Yeah, 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 they're struggling for bills, you know? I'm driving a Mercedes, I ain't struggling for bills. Man's got money in my pocket. Look, if I made a grand today, how much more money do you think I got, fam? Rhetorical question. Next thing you know, daddy will go home and sleep on that 100 to 200 pounds that um, his older gave him, or this older to be gave him family will phone him up within the next couple of days innit yeah put me on I'll be your runner
that's how easy it is. That is how easy it is. Not to mention him wearing his Javanchi, um, you get me, innit? Because when Utes is in school or coming up 60, 70, that like, them man is impressionable. But you know, like a man who's 27, 28, going on 30, still impressionable. Man who's 40, still impressionable. Yeah? Man want to wear the latest clothes and the best clothes and that. Yeah, sure. Look, but man's got Javanchi and that. But man's driving around in LV sliders and that. Yeah, these cost two, three hundred pounds. These cost three times more than, or you get me, three of your dad's best trainers can't even match to my LV sliders and that. Yeah. Man will compare himself to the youth's parents and that, and basically make the youth think that, yeah, my mum can't even chat to me. My dad can't even chat to me. My dad, my mum, ain't even giving me money like that. They're giving me a little idiot 20 pounds. They're telling me to go work at Asda for 70 pounds for the day when I can make a grand in one day. I even want to hear what they got to tell me because they're in debt. They're not driving a nice car. They're swaggy shit. No, I want to listen to what this guy's got to say. But yeah, that's the end of the video, man. Stay away, don't know.